Sai here. To finish my videos on evolution, I want to talk about speciation, or how new species get created. Natural selection can lead to the creation of new species. So first off, a species is a group of closely related organisms that are similar and can have fertile offspring. Okay, similar, that makes sense. But fertile offspring? What's that? Well, it means that the offspring can have offspring of their own. For example, a donkey and a horse, two different species, can mate and have an offspring. But their offspring is a mule, and mules can't have offspring on their own. They're kind of a dead end. Behavior is also an important part of deciding what species are. A male and female of a species can mate and have fertile offspring. Let's say you have a lot of different kinds of birds. Further, let's say they're all finches. Now, the different species of finches are very similar, but they don't mate. It's not that they can't. They choose not to. That behavior separates them into different species, even if they are biologically capable of mating and having fertile offspring. We still consider them to be different species. One of the most common ways for speciation to occur is by habitat fragmentation. Where there once was one habitat, now there are more. Here's a lovely forest. One big habitat for lots of woodland creatures. There's one species of chipmunk that lives here. Then a hurricane comes through, which changes the course of a river. Now you can see there are two different habitats. Perhaps later on, a highway is built. Now, the original habitat has been fragmented into four smaller habitats. Because of the river and the wide highway, it's difficult for individuals to cross from one into another. Let's say a coyote moves into one of these four smaller habitats. This introduces evolutionary pressure. The chipmunks there, with adaptations, will be more likely to pass on those adaptations, which will become more common over time. The predator, the coyote, eats the chipmunks that it can find most easily. Some of the chipmunks have a variation that helps them survive, an adaptation. Let's say it smells and tastes bad. Over time, more of the population of chipmunks in the coyote habitat fragment have bad odor and taste because the adaptation will spread through the population. This adaptation wouldn't spread to the other three habitats because they can't cross the river or highway. Now, this is a simple change, but it's important. Over time, more and more changes may happen, and you could end up with four similar but different populations of chipmunks. If they don't choose to interbreed, then they are different species. And with one population being, shall we say, rank, the others may not want to mate with them. So already we may have a new species simply because regular chipmunks won't mate with them. Family trees. Okay, changing gears here. Do you recognize this kind of diagram? That's right, it's a family tree. In this case, I've put the older generations at the bottom and the younger ones toward the top. What 
kind of things do family trees show you? Well, they show who's the parent of who, who are siblings, who are cousins. But there are things that family trees like this don't show you very well. Who's male and who's female? What year someone was born? It could be that Oscar is older than Lisa. The chart doesn't tell. Question time. Who is more closely related? Oscar and Nicole or Oscar and Jane? You can tell that it's Oscar and Nicole because Nicole is Oscar's mother and Jane is Oscar's first cousin once removed. So there are things that a family tree is good at showing and other things it has trouble with. I'm going to show you a different kind of tree diagram. This one is called a cladogram doesn't show individuals. Instead, it shows species and how the species are related to each other. Like the family tree from before, the older things are lower down and recent things or events are further towards the top of the diagram. The species at the top, at the tips of the lines, are modern species. As you go down, you can see that some lines join before others do. The species whose lines join further up the page are more closely related to each other than to other species. Draw your finger down the line from amphibians. As your finger goes down, it's pointing back millions of years into the past. The species on this line aren't all modern amphibians. Those are at the tip of the line. The species here are the ancestors of modern amphibians. At some point in the past, the amphibian line joins to the branch that includes birds, rodents, and us. We're primates. What was the defining thing that made this break between amphibians and the other species to the right. Look at the red bar on the branch to the right, the one right above the branch to amphibians, and it says amniotic egg. At this point in history, some population evolved the amniotic egg. The amniotic egg was able to be laid on the ground or kept inside the mother. Non-amniotic eggs had to be laid in water. The amnion helps protect the growing fetus. So everything in the branches above the red amniotic egg bar has an amniotic egg. None of the other species do. The places where a vertical line branches into a horizontal line is when the most recent common ancestor of all the things above it lived. For the one leading to amphibians and primates, etc., I've marked it with a green circle. From this, you can tell that the branch leading to amphibians happened sometime after four limbs developed. And four limbs happened after bony skeleton. This kind of diagram, the cladogram, is like a family tree, but for species. You can tell which species are more closely related, and you can tell the order of some events, but it's generally missing precise dates. According to this, what species are we, primates, most closely related to? Rodents. You only have to trace down one step 
to get back up to them. What species are we the least related to? Sharks. You have to go down five steps and back up to the present to get to sharks. And that fifth step was only after vertebrates but before bony skeletons. That's a long time ago. Originally, these cladograms were made based on physical features that could be observed from fossils. But with DNA evidence available now, some older diagrams are being refined based on new information. Our family trees are getting more accurate. Thanks for watching. Riley Sy out.